morning, everybody. Man, it's good to be on time again. It's been over a week, I think, since we've been able to be on time. Yesterday, I was close, two minutes late. Anyhow, the 29th of September, 2020, 10 o'clock in the morning, we have been studying the book of Exodus. The word Genesis means beginning. The word Exodus means departure or exit. And we're learning about the departure of the children of Israel from bondage in the land of Egypt. We started yesterday with the 10 plagues. We covered four of them just in chapter 8 alone. Those four were the waters of Egypt turning to blood, therefore undrinkable, unusable. The second uh, plague that we looked at was the plague of frogs. The entire land of Egypt covered in frogs you pull back your bed sheet and there's frogs in your bed. It was terrible. The third plague we talked about was the plague of lice. All the dust of the earth became lice and began to infect the people and the animals. Sounds horrible. And then the fourth plague we talked about was the plague of flies. So flies everywhere you go, massive swarms of flies, you know, with flies bring disease. And we're going to get into the next plague here in chapter 8 this morning. And we're going to see that the cattle are affected and the death of the cattle occur. And so we see that economically these plagues are taking a toll on Egypt as well. Imagine if you're a, a, a dairy farmer or a beef farmer or, you, you know, you have camels for transportation and you lose all your animals, your livestock. Well, man, you're taking a hit financially. And even on top of that, think of the lice. Think of when you get lice, uh, the kids bring lice home from school, and then you've got to go buy that shampoo, whatever it's called, and get that little tiny comb, and you got to spend time washing their hair. Maybe you even cut their hair. Then you've got to strip all the beds and all the uh, pillowcases, maybe even get rid of your pillows, buy new pillows, just one household. It takes a financial toll on the house dealing with lice. And so what about the whole country? Uh, frog infestation. Think of the, you know, if, if I were in Egypt and after the frogs were gone, I'd provide maybe a frog cleanup service and I'd start a new business and make money cleaning up after the frogs. But there's a financial toll, an economic price that's being paid here as well. Yet Pharaoh hardens his heart over and over and over again. So let's pray, and we're going to get into chapter number 9. It has 35 verses, so we've got some work to do this morning. Let's pray. Father, thank you for this book. Thank you for everyone who comes and listens with us every day, even those who catch up later on in the day. I pray your blessing on our study here this morning. Please meet with us and give us wisdom. In Christ's name we ask, amen. All right, chapter number nine, book of Exodus, verse number one. Here we go. Then the Lord said unto Moses, Go in unto Pharaoh and tell him, Thus saith the Lord God of the Hebrews, Let my people go that they may serve me. Notice Moses is speaking on behalf of God. This isn't his idea. It's not his initiation. God is sending him. For if thou wilt refuse, I'm sorry, thou wilt, if thou refuse to let them go, and wilt hold with them still, behold, the hand of the Lord is upon thy cattle, which is in the field, upon the horses, upon the asses, upon the camels, upon the oxen, and upon the sheep. There shall be a very grievous moraine. And the Lord shall sever between the cattle of Israel and the cattle of Egypt, and there shall nothing die of all that is the children of Israel. And the Lord appointed a set time, saying, Tomorrow the Lord shall do this thing in the land. And the Lord did that thing on the morrow, and all the cattle of Egypt died, but of the cattle of the children of Israel died not one. And Pharaoh sent, and behold, there was not one of the cattle of the Israelites dead. And the heart of Pharaoh was hardened, and he did not let the people go. So this is a new plague, a different type of plague. We already said water to blood, frogs, lice, flies. If you remember all four of those, 
Aaron stretched his rod out over the waters, or he struck the earth, and the dust turned to lice. This is the first plague, plague number five, where the rod is not involved. Aaron is not involved. God brings that moraine, which is a disease. This is a cattle disease, and that's how we'll uh, address it. So water to blood, frogs, lice, flies, cattle disease. That's what we'll refer to this one as. And so God tells him, hey, this disease is going to come upon your cattle. Notice what he mentioned there. I got to go back a page. He listed all the animals, horses, asses, camels, oxen, sheep. So goats aren't mentioned here, and that's very interesting, uh, and we're going to come to that in, in a few minutes here, and there's a reason I bring it up. But we're told that not one of the Israelites' animals died, but all the cattle died of the Egyptians. So everybody that owned a camel, everybody that owned a horse, everybody that owned sheep, uh, what was the other? Oxen, I think. I think there were five things. Horses, asses, camels, oxen, sheep. Those five animals are mentioned specifically. Of course, an ass is a donkey in the Bible. That's not profanity used in that uh, way. So, all those animals are dead. And uh, not one of the Israelites is dead. Pharaoh instead hardens his heart. He does not let the people go. So, the Lord's going to send another plague to them. I'm going to try to keep running down this list here. Bloody water. Um, frogs, lice, no, yeah, flies, cattle disease, bloody water, frogs, lice, flies, cattle disease. I can't really make an acronym out of that, right? Uh, bloody water, B, uh, frogs, F, lice, L, uh, flies, F. Yeah, that's not going to make anything that makes sense. All right, let's keep going here. And the Lord said, verse eight, unto Moses and Aaron, take to you handfuls of ashes of the furnace and let Moses sprinkle it toward the heaven in the sight of Pharaoh and it shall become small dust in all the land of Egypt and she'll be a boil breaking forth with blains upon man and upon beast throughout all the land of Egypt and they took the ashes of the furnace and stood before Pharaoh and Moses sprinkled it up toward heaven and it became a boil breaking forth with blains upon man and upon beast and the magicians could not stand before Moses because of the boils for the boil was upon the magicians and upon all the Egyptians and the Lord hardened the heart of Pharaoh and he hearkened not unto them as the Lord had spoken unto Moses. So, this is plague number six. It's a plague of boils upon man and beast. Moses is told to take the ashes of the furnace, sprinkle it in the sky toward the sun in Pharaoh's sight, and whatever happened there, God miraculously caused boils to come on all the people of Egypt, uh, all the, the animals of Egypt that are left over from the cattle disease and there's a number of reasons uh why you know we read all cattle died and i believe the bible's accurate there all cattle died we mentioned that goats didn't die uh, or were not mentioned that they had died. So it could be that the goats were still alive. It could be that when Pharaoh saw that the Israelites' livestock was still alive, that he took that livestock back. It could be that they purchased or bought. We don't know what the time frame is between these plagues, how, how much time God is putting. So there's time for new animals to be acquired uh, throughout all this. So now these animals have the boils, the people have the boils. And you know, the magicians have been showing up through plagues one through four. And here they don't show up because they're covered in the boils too. And so God is judging this land. And let me bring this up now. When I was a younger Christian and I'd hear this story and I'd read these phrases, like we read verse seven, the heart of Pharaoh was hardened. And then we read verse 12, and the Lord hardened the heart of Pharaoh. And I used to wonder, why is God hardening his heart? If he wants the people delivered, why isn't he, you know, softening his heart and letting him let the people go? You know, it's one thing when Pharaoh hardens his own heart, 
Why does God also harden his heart then and, and restrict him from letting the people go? And the answer is this. God's not only interested in delivering the people. Now, he is interested in delivering the people, and he is delivering the people. But he's doing it on his timeline because there's something else that God is trying to do. God is not just trying to deliver the people. If he wanted to do that, he could touch Pharaoh's heart to show favor to the people and just let them go. None of this would be necessary. But God is introducing pain into the lives of Pharaoh and the Egyptians to show them that he exists, that he is real, and that he is to be feared and worshipped, and he is to be looked up to. And I guarantee you that there are people that come to Christ or come to God, if you will, uh, because of all these plagues. I'll tell you what, if I lived in Egypt and my Pharaoh was being an idiot and refusing to let the people go, I don't care how much I benefited from the slave labor of these Israelites, I'd be saying, hey, buddy, I'm going to vote you out next time around. Of course, it didn't work that way, but I, I don't want you to be our leader if you're going to keep punishing us this way. Wake up, buddy. But God is not just trying to set the people free, or he could have done that easily. He's also trying to teach the people that he is God and to show forth his power. So sometimes when we pray, we go, God, I need this in my life. And God says, yeah, you're right. You do need that. But I also have some things that I'm trying to accomplish alongside of, of meeting your needs. So I'm going to do both at the same time. Your needs going to have to be, you know, be patient. It's going to be met eventually, but I'm going to do these other things as well. And so that's why God hardens Pharaoh's heart. So just to, to, to sum that up, when you're wondering what's taking God so long, or why things seem to be in place that hinder the ultimate goal, it's because God has other goals besides just ours that he's trying to accomplish. Verse number 13, And the Lord said unto Moses, Rise up early in the morning, and stand before Pharaoh, and say unto him, Thus saith the Lord God of the Hebrews, Let my people go, that they may serve me. He's a broken record, isn't he? That's good, though. Consistent effort. For if, or for, I'm sorry, for I will at this time send all my plagues upon thine heart and upon thy servants and upon thy people, that thou mayest know that there is none like me in all the earth. There you go. That's it right there. Why am I sending these plagues? So the people of Egypt know there is none like him in the earth. You know, think of these wildfires just destroying the West destroying the state of California, and I believe Oregon as well. I'm not sure if there's fire in Seattle right now. We still see plagues and pestilences, and we still think that we have something to do with it. And to be sure, arson or, or uh, you know, uh, poor management of, of fire resources can cause something. But man, when, when God just starts allowing thousands of acres of land and, and incredible portions, square miles of, of forestry to be burnt and destroyed like that. It's certainly plague-like. So God says, I'm doing these things to get your attention so you know who I am. Verse number 15, for now I will stretch out my hand that I may smite thee and thy people with pestilence and thou shalt be cut off from the earth. And in very deed for this cause have I raised thee up, for to show in thee my power, and that my name may be declared throughout all the earth. Do you see how God tells Pharaoh, I'm the one who raised you up. I'm the one who put you in power. And the reason I chose you is so that I could show my power forth through you and your stubbornness. Verse 17, As yet exaltest thou thyself against my people, that thou wilt not let them go? Behold, tomorrow about this time I will cause it to rain a very grievous hail, such as hath not been seen in Egypt, been in Egypt since the foundation thereof, even until now. He says, you're going to have the, the worst hailstorm this country's ever seen. 
Send therefore now and gather thy cattle and all that thou hast in the field. For upon every man and beast which shall be found in the field and shall not be brought home, the hail shall come down upon them and they shall die. He that feared the word of the Lord among the servants of Pharaoh made his servants and his cattle flee into the houses. And he that regarded not the word of the Lord left his servants and his cattle in the field. So let's recap these plagues again. Bloody water, frogs, lice, flies, cattle disease, boils, and now hail. All right, so that's where we are with the plagues. This hail is going to come down, and it's going to destroy. We're going to find that it's hail mingled with fire even, and it's going to destroy the, the crops. It's going to destroy the livestock that's left outside. They're told to bring them in, and this is another instance where we're bringing up this livestock again, right? All cattle died earlier because of the plague of the cattle disease, but obviously Egypt either got some more cattle rounded up or this is speaking of, of goats and other livestock that were not mentioned during the cattle disease. And so the hail is coming. Verse number 22, And the Lord said unto Moses, Stretch forth thine hand toward heaven, that there may be hail in all the land of Egypt, upon man and upon beast and upon every herb of the field throughout the land of Egypt. So this is interesting. I'm just catching on to this myself. The first four plagues... Aaron had the rod, stretched it out to bring the plagues on. Then the fifth plague was the cattle disease. Moses nor Aaron were involved here. God brought the cattle disease. Now the boils, Moses took the ashes and threw them. And now Moses is stretching his hand toward heaven that the hail will come. It seems as though God is now transitioning from Aaron to Moses in pulling these plagues uh, down to the earth. It's just something I, I noticed here. Next, verse 23, And Moses stretched forth his rod toward heaven, and the Lord sent thunder and hail, and the fire ran along upon the ground. And the Lord rained hail upon the land of Egypt. So there was hail, and fire mingled with the hail. Very grievous, such as there was none like it in all the land of Egypt, since it became a nation. And the hail smote throughout all the land of Egypt, all that was in the field, both man and beast. And the hail smote every herb of the field, and brake every tree of the field. Only in the land of Goshen, where the children of Israel were, was there no hail. So, God doesn't send hail to Goshen, where the Israelites dwell. He didn't allow their cattle to die. He's protecting the people. And that's also very clearly showing the divide. Something else we saw about this is the people that believed the message of God, whether they were Israelites or not, that brought their servants and their cattle in were protected from it. Those who didn't believe in God, they left their people out in the field. They left their livestock out in the field and they paid for it. <clears throat> so bloody water, frogs, lice, flies, cattle disease, uh, boils and hail. That's where we're at. And that's the last um, plague in this chapter. But now let's look at Pharaoh. Pharaoh's going to start having a change of heart, and he's going to start showing himself coming around. Now, remember, when he started, Moses said, the Lord said, let my people go. And Pharaoh said, who is the Lord? Then later on, I think it was yesterday, he said, uh, you, know, you know, I know the Lord. Now look at here, verse 27, Pharaoh sent and called for Moses and Aaron, and said unto them, I have sinned this time. Look at Pharaoh's words. The Lord is righteous, and I and my people are wicked. Wow. He has really come around. Earlier it was, who is the Lord? Now it is, the Lord is righteous, I and my people are wicked. That's pretty incredible. Entreat the Lord, for it is enough that there be no more mighty thunderings and hail. And look here, and I will let you go, and ye shall stay no longer. This is Now he said this before, but not this emphatically. And Moses said unto him, As soon as I am gone out of the city, I will spread abroad my hands unto the Lord, 
and the thunder shall cease, neither shall there be any more hail, that thou mayest know how that the earth is the Lord's. But as for thee and thy servants, I know that they will not yet fear the Lord God. Moses is catching on too, isn't he? The Pharaoh's catching on. The Lord is righteous. I'm wicked. My people are wicked. But Moses is also catching on. Yeah, you've told me you're going to let us go before. I don't trust you. I don't believe you. Verse number 31. And the flax and the barley was smitten. For the barley was in the ear and the flax was boiled. So, uh, bold, bold, sorry. I don't know anything about flax. These two crops survive. But look here, uh, 32, but the wheat and the rye, uh, those, those two crops were, were, were destroyed, but the re wheat and the rye were not smitten, for they were not grown up. So they had yet been in the earth. And Moses went out of the city from Pharaoh and spread abroad his hands unto the earth. And the thunders and hail ceased, and the rain was not poured upon the earth. And look here, <laughs> Moses is right. And when Pharaoh saw that the rain and the hail and the thunders were ceased, he sinned yet more and hardened his heart, he and his servants. Verse 35, and the heart of Pharaoh was hardened, neither would he let the children of Israel go, as the Lord had spoken by Moses. So what progress was gained through chapter number nine? None. <laughs> We started out with a hard-hearted Pharaoh. We ended up with a hard-hearted Pharaoh. He made some promises. He showed some promise to no avail. Nothing came of it. All right, that's chapter number nine. You know, there's 40 chapters in Exodus. It's a bit of a longer book. So 10 will be tomorrow, which is the 30th of September, last day of the month. And then we'll have 30 more chapters. And there's 31 days in October, so... Uh, it's gonna, we're going to take the whole month of October, then 31st of October, we'll do something different. I'm trying to work it out so that we can start the book of Luke on December the 1st and cover Luke from the 1st through Christmas Eve, the 24th of December. There's 24 chapters in Luke. I think that'd be a good way to go about it. So, you know, we'll pray about it and see how the Lord has it because we'll have, what, 30 days in November plus the 31st of October. we got to put 31 chapters together uh, between New Testament and Old Testament. I'm sure we can make that happen. All right. Hey, thanks for watching. Like, love, share the post, get the word out there. It's good to be in the word of God every day, and we want you with us. All right. Have a great Tuesday. God bless you. We'll talk to you tomorrow.